Hi, today I wanted to switch it up and talk about something that I feel like as adults we definitely spend a lot of time thinking about what we want and how we may want to progress in our career. Let me start from the very beginning. So I would say that when I was in high school, I had the perception that people who wanted to go to an amazing college wanted to do so because they wanted to be super successful. And for someone like me, I really did not take school seriously after a while. When it came time for college and deciding where to go, I didn't care where I went. I pretty much let my parents choose for me. My brother decided to go to NYU and because tuition is so expensive, my parents wanted me to go to a school in-state. That way it would be much cheaper and I could also live at home. So I only went to look at two schools, TCNJ, College of New Jersey, and Rutgers University. And I just ended up going to Rutgers after they accepted me. I similarly hated GPA, did not really focus on my grades very much, but I also struggled really hard in school. It's sometimes weird to think about how much I struggled in school because when I think of my career now, I don't consider myself that stupid, but when I was in school, I really felt like an idiot. I kind of may have viewed myself that way because I was just confused and maybe lacking confidence in my own abilities because I didn't really understand the school material very well. And since I didn't socialize very much, I didn't really have people to do homework with. I didn't have people to ask for help with. And aside from all of that, I also didn't like the idea of going to get help from the teacher. I did at times, but I just wished I didn't need to as often as I did. <laughs> the main reason I'm talking about school is because I feel like that mentality sort of carried into work. I feel like as a person, I never focus too hard on, yeah, I need to make big money and I really need to be super successful. I wanna be super influential. I wanna do great things. I was never that type of person. So in a sense, I felt like I was content with being average around that time, early 20s, right after graduating college. So when I got my first job, it was around, $40,000, I believe, and that seemed like a fairly reasonable salary to me. I feel like it's really not so bad, especially because I was able to move out on that salary, although I did pay 50% of my paycheck on rent. I stayed at my first job for two years, and I think that during that time, it was maybe the first time I was starting to realize how important your manager is because at that job i actually wasn't developing it i was a quality assurance analyst and that is basically someone who does testing and at this company we were manual testers not automated so there was no coding involved we were just manually testing stuff and <clears throat> the main reason i decided to do quality assurance analyst was because with my cs degree and as a person that has never done outside projects. You know how some people do their own personal projects, they code during their free time? I could never do that. I don't enjoy coding during my free time. Coding is a job to me. It's not something I would enjoy doing on my own. At times I do wish I was like that though because I feel like if I were, then I could definitely probably climb up higher in my career much faster, which would equate to more money which would probably equate to more success earlier on, but maybe I'm just not good at sacrificing stuff like that, or I have low tolerance. My confidence in terms of my ability to be a software engineer was super low after school because I struggled in all of my courses, so I was thinking that there is no way that anyone would want to hire me as a software engineer, so I started my first job as quality assurance analyst, a tester, and I was there for two years and during that time I would say that for the first half of my job I definitely enjoyed it but 
it didn't really feel like the company were giving you raises or I feel like they communicated very poorly about new opportunities. So I was also really not happy with the people I was working with. So my manager was someone that I feel like tried to be your friend. He was overly nice. He was definitely a nice person. I feel like if you're in a manager position, you really need the people under you to respect you. And this is a problem that I've come across many times where outside of work, even outside of work, when I was rating in WOW, if there was an officer or the guild leader who I felt like didn't know what the fuck they were talking about, I would hate to listen to them give orders because I did not respect whatever they were saying. I didn't respect their abilities, their skills, their knowledge. So it would be very hard for me to just stay under them, be quiet, and continuously listen to what they were saying. So this is a similar scenario where my manager was a nice guy, but outside of that trait, I didn't feel like he did anything meaningful. So I was probably one of the few people who just didn't like him because sometimes he would constantly come to my desk. He said like really weird shit sometimes in a way to be friendly. And I just never liked any of that. So I was definitely one of the minority that wasn't really a fan of him. And I'd say towards the end of my two year mark at that company, I was just really unhappy. So this is a constant cycle for me in terms of my career. I usually left my job because I was unhappy. And I decided for some reason after that job that I would still try to apply for programming jobs because I knew that they paid more money and I think I was just curious to see if I would be able to find a job that related to that. So the next job that I found was Chubb. My time at Chubb was actually pretty interesting to me because I started off as an application developer and I'd say this form of development wasn't exactly what I expected because they used something called Metastorm Business Process Management and in a sense to me it felt like I was playing around with an application visually so you would construct it in a way like you're drawing shapes in Photoshop or something so you would have visuals of what your application looks like and then you would select stuff on your application and then you would code how they would interact with something else when the user uses it. So for example, you would click on a button and then you would click on on click. What does this button do? And that form of programming wasn't what I expected because in school you just learn you have like these big ass files full of code and then that would translate into a website or whatever you were using an application. So this was much different and I felt like it was kind of cheating because I didn't learn much about how files tie in to each other like you do in school and the, I guess, traditional way of programming. So this felt easier. I did have to learn a lot about their workflow and how their business side worked and all of those things. So aside from learning more about using that software, I was still constantly learning a lot of new things. And that's something that I didn't start to appreciate more until I think past that point where at least nowadays, if I'm working on a new task and it's something I'm unfamiliar with, even if I'm not learning something new in regards to programming, if I learn something new about the business and what they're requesting, that's always just I always feel good about that because it's knowledge I didn't have before. And even if it's not something that will apply to everything else in my life, it's just something new. So that's just stuff that I appreciate now. So my time at Chubb was quite the roller coaster because when I first started the job, I'd say I was working and training for roughly six months before the company announced that they were being bought out. And as someone, let's see, how old was I at the time? I was about 23. I haven't been working long. I've never been through a merger. So all of the older people, they were really concerned about their life drastically changing after the merger. 
and I was just carefree, not caring at all, and just going about my business. So the interesting thing about that period of time was things kind of felt pretty gradual in changes, but they were definitely all negative changes. My team consisted of five people, my manager, me, senior application developer who was basically the person I worked the most with, one other older male, and then this woman who I didn't really work with at all. But the first change was that the older male, he got laid off. So during his last few weeks there, we had a lot of meetings together where he was telling me about some maintenance stuff that he was doing on a monthly basis that I needed to start taking on. So we had those meetings and I just remembered not really being interested in the stuff that I was being taught, mainly because they weren't really programming related. They were just, it felt like chores to me. So I wasn't too thrilled about that. Also during that period of time, it seemed like my senior application developer, the guy who was training me and who was someone that I collaborated with very closely, I feel like he was going through something personal also. My manager mainly said that he was maybe having health issues, but out of respect for him, obviously, he never said anything detailed to me, so I never knew what happened with him, but he took unpaid leave of absence for quite a while before he ultimately decided to resign, so our team just got super small by then, and let me just say that this manager at Chubb he is the only manager in my life. I lied, I had one more before that, maybe I'll talk about him a little bit, but this manager is someone that I was very close to. We got along very well. We texted outside of work. I even went to his house once to meet his family. He got a puppy, and at the time, Riley was still a puppy, so I brought her over for a play date. But I got to meet his family. I really liked his wife. I liked his kids. It was a really eye-opening experience for me, maybe, seeing his family and meeting them because I remember towards the end of the night, we were just sitting in his living room. He lit up a fire in the fireplace. And I just remembered feeling like this is what people must feel and enjoy about having a family of their own. Just being in their house, surrounded by family, spending time together, and having it feel really nice. And maybe that's a different feeling than what I ever experienced with my own family because when I was there with him at his house, it felt different because I felt like I was putting myself in his shoes as the parents. So whenever I spend time with my parents, it's me being the younger one, the child, right? But if you have that different experience of being the parent in a family and enjoying it in that way, I do think it tends to feel different. So that's that was something I just remembered feeling when I was spending time with them. So with that backstory <laughs> and knowing how well we got along and how I did definitely respect him as a manager, I was really unhappy when he told me that they also laid him off. That was something I was really not expecting. I'm not really sure why but I just didn't really know what to expect from all of this change. I remember both of us, we weren't really happy with the direction it was going. He had a new manager above him and she was a B. <laughs> I feel like she was a B because she, I feel like she didn't really care about what we did previously. She just kind of came in and was like, oh, this is how it is now and you're gonna just have to deal with it. And um, he did push back at times but she's not really a compromising type, I don't think. So when he did tell me he got laid off, I remembered feeling that he was the last person or thing I cared about at that company. So I knew I didn't have a future there anymore, but I wasn't really sure whether I wanted to leave right away. I was definitely applying out, but I wasn't having any luck just yet. So yeah, when he left, I got a new manager and he was, remote in California. So I only met him maybe once or twice when he did travel to New Jersey, but I didn't like him because to me, he felt like a doormat type of person. He's someone that just 
simply follows the rules without challenging them if he feels the need to. So basically anything that his boss told him, he would just do it and not care. And I, I can understand people following the rules, right? But I feel like at some point you kind of need to be your own person. Stop being such a pussy. So I feel like he was a big pussy. Once he started becoming my manager, since he was not in the office, I just stopped going into the office. This was a unique time for me because I was really thrilled about the fact that I could just stay home all day, all week and not go into the office. But on the other hand, I was not satisfied with my work. So I knew that I couldn't go on like this forever, right? And eventually I think that his boss started noticing that I wasn't in the office. So she told him to tell me that I need to start coming in. So after enough time of that and they were giving me work that wasn't coding related at all. They were having me do reports, Excel spreadsheet shit, and I wasn't into any of that. Anytime we had team meetings on the phone with him and other people, it was just, I had no interest. I was lacking a lot of motivation. I was not happy. Once Shane gave me the idea that I could possibly start looking for jobs out here, I started doing that. And once I managed to find a job, I was so thrilled about it because moving here was something I was really excited about, the weather for sure. And when I gave them my two week notice, they actually requested that I go into the office for those last two weeks. And when I told my laid off manager about this request of theirs, he told me not to give into that because they were putting in zero effort to make sure I was happy with my job or giving me work that was aligned with my interest or my original job title of application developer. So I shouldn't feel obligated to go into the office for, the, for those last two weeks. And I liked that he told me that because normally I do admit I am someone who does tend to lean towards following the rules because I can be scared of the consequences or I don't like confrontation Maybe I would have been a little nervous to decline their request if it wasn't for my manager. And I actually told my parents about what he said and they are people who follow the rules. They were saying how I shouldn't ruin my relationship with my company by declining their request. They viewed it as burning bridges and maybe it was, but I don't really care because I'm not gonna work with them anymore. and. Are they really going to be that bitter about me just not wanting to come into the office for two weeks even though I was leaving the company to possibly affect my life further down the line? I just highly doubt it. So I just emailed my manager back saying, no, you guys put in zero effort to compromise with me about my happiness in the workplace and any of that regard. So no, I'm just gonna stay home for these last two weeks. And I remember my manager saying something about he, how he was sorry that I wasn't happy and not realizing maybe some BS along the way. He was just a nice guy. And <laughs> I'll say that maybe in context of this video, nice guy is not a good thing. Once I left that company, I started at my first job here in San Diego as a software engineer. And I do firmly think that I would have just taken any job that would have had me as long as it got me to move to San Diego because I was just really wanting to live here and start fresh in an area also that I felt like had more opportunity. Anytime I was looking for jobs in New Jersey, it felt very limiting or it was very focused on specific areas. It just didn't feel that diverse. So when I came out here or when I was applying, it was just there were so many more options and they were also around the same location. I feel like San Diego just has a lot of opportunities for tech. I was only at my first job here for six months and I am sure I documented a lot of that last year when I was job hunting because I hated my job. I was really unhappy there. They did things very disorganized and I feel like a lot of people that worked there had multiple roles and that was only because they didn't have that many people that worked for them. They were a relatively small company. They would have last second meetings. 
And I can understand that being a thing, but not too common. When I was younger, at my first job, I definitely remembered not understanding why having a heads up for a meeting was a good thing. I just thought people were being anal, but now it's just, it makes a lot of sense. You want to give people a heads up because people have lives. They do stuff with their time. So for example, if they ever scheduled last second lunch meetings, I would be unhappy because I spent all of my lunches walking Riley ever since I got her, basically. Even since New Jersey, I have been driving home to walk her during my lunch break. So if I ever had a random curveball that of a meeting, then I wouldn't be happy about that. And it happened pretty often there. So I did not like that. Also, I was working with specific people that I really disliked. For the past several years now, I would confidently say that there are not many people that I've come across in my life that I would say I've strongly hated, but I would say I strongly hated this person because he was extremely stubborn. He wanted things to be done his way. So even if it exists, so I was working on code, I was working on a file and it was already organized a certain way, written a certain way, he would still change it without permission. So when I was collaborating with him, it was just two of us. He was mainly working on the user interface side and I was working on all the backend stuff like coding functions and all of that. He would still find time to change up how things were done. Like I said, he would do this without permission for my manager. When, when it would be almost time to give a demo to our clients, we wouldn't be ready for it because anytime I would meet with him and all I would simply have to do would be to merge our stuff together because we're working on different things. He is working on visuals, I'm working on functionality, so generally it would be really easy to put the two together if he didn't change my stuff, but he changed things constantly and I am not really someone that likes to create problems out of nothing. So. I don't really take pride in work. You know how some people, when they do something, they really need it to be shown to the people, to the clients. Like he was that person. If he did anything, he really wanted to make sure that it was shown to clients because I don't know if it's a sense of pride or what, but I'm not that type of person. I just want to get work done and have as little issue and conflict as possible. But that was impossible with this person because even if I gave in to all of his demands, it would still result in our demo not being successful because we wouldn't be able to have the work done on time. Also, maybe to give an idea as to how ridiculous this guy was, towards the end of my time at that company, there were several instances where my manager would be scolding him in front of our entire team or just the people who were working on the project at the time because of what he was doing. It's really hard to explain him, but anytime I talked to Shane about him, he would agree that he was constantly refactoring stuff. There would be times where we were trying to go through test cases for something. And I remember this one day kind of clearly because I remember we were spending several hours before lunch trying to do something like this and we weren't making good progress. We were going through it so slowly because of this one guy and towards the end when it was closer to lunch and I just wanted to leave, I was giving him attitude because fuck that guy. He's the worst person I have ever worked with and if you want to know something about me and this is something that I feel like would be interesting for people to know because it's very important to me, I guess, in my identity, but I don't like faking anything. So when it comes to the office, if I'm displeased with something or if I'm not happy, I don't really hide it. And that kind of goes along with my belief that I really hate office politics. I hate all of that stuff. I don't care about position really. Just because someone that is higher up is coming to visit the office, that means nothing to me because I have zero relationship with that person and just because he is higher up, sure, he might influence my career there or my position or any of that, but 
I still don't like the idea of sucking up to somebody or caring about someone's appearance in the office simply because of their position. I just don't play that game. So for example, Christmas parties, that was something I always hated. Previous companies did it, my current one doesn't luckily, but you would just feel obligated to attend those because you need to go make a good appearance, maybe network around a little bit, and I don't like doing any of that stuff. I still apply the same stuff in life to work. If you are not interesting to me as a person, I don't want to know you. I don't want to talk to you. And even if you're higher up, that could influence my position in the company. I still don't want to talk to you if you're not interesting because I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't like to fake any aspect of who I am just for stuff like that. Even stuff where if I had a meeting and I was losing interest, I actually am not good at being in meetings. I always get tired, I get sleepy, I lose interest, and I don't make much effort to show otherwise. So in the past, my manager at Chubb would tell me that I need to improve on stuff like that. And I would understand why people care a lot about their appearance, especially in the workplace, but I don't care about my appearance in the workplace because I don't like when people jump to conclusions. I know it makes sense to assume that just because someone looks tired in a meeting, you could start applying all these negative adjectives to who they are as a person, but there's so much more to life than just being like, oh, this person was looking sleepy in my meeting. Fuck that guy. Like, who cares about stuff like that? I just, I could never put value into any of that stuff. So I don't play any of these games. I still don't play any of those games. Sometimes it just makes me feel like I need to conform too much and I really hate conforming. I hate it with a passion. And I think that's another reason why I don't respect some managers because they do things without good reason. And I dislike that trait. I feel like you are partially a weak individual if you do things like that. If you don't challenge things when they don't have a good reason for being the way they are, then I feel like you really are just being submissive. And those are not traits that I like in someone. And if I notice them in people, then I feel like it might be hard to change my opinion on them. When I say these things though, I'm not saying that I am openly rude to people. That's just stupid. I'm not openly rude to people, but I just am not taking the initiative to talk to them unless they talk to me first. And if they talk to me about something work related, that's fine, I'll help you, that's my job. But if it's more personal stuff, then I am not gonna really stick around for that. The job before my current one, <laughs> I was just needing to get out of there as soon as possible. And sometimes when I look back at the videos that I was making at that time, it does make me feel uh, a little bad and definitely really happy to know how things have changed because I remembered just feeling super suffocated at that company. Every day that I was going, I was so unhappy and I was willing to not be paid for several days. I was losing out on several hundred dollars of pay just so I could leave my company as soon as possible because most companies require two weeks notice, right? And I was going to give that, but they were short on their budget or something. So not paying me was good for them. And they asked me to just stop coming in after two days or something like that. And I was absolutely going to do that because I was concerned about my happiness I really didn't like the stress that I was feeling just from being in the office. I feel like just being there made me extremely unhappy. And another thing that I just really didn't like was, it sounds simple, but it definitely affects you. Think about it on a daily basis. My desk was in a busy area. So people were constantly walking back and forth all around me and I hated that. I don't like not having any form of privacy. I had none of that. So every single day, I would always feel a little bit of anxiety about someone walking behind me. I did learn to live with it a little bit, but I do think that it must have negatively affected my experience there in some way. I'm not really sure I want to talk about my current job, 
uh, I will say that on a daily basis, I'm generally happy there. I'm generally not stressed and I do feel relatively carefree when I'm there. But on the other hand, I feel that ultimately it is impossible for me to be 100% happy if I'm not working remotely because I strongly disagree with making it mandatory for people to drive into the office because at least for me, my job can be 100% done remotely. It's just done on a computer. I can do it anywhere. I know security is a concern, but I just want to find a job that's remote and that is mandatory. I 100% want a remote job within the next five years, I'd say, hopefully sooner than that, because I know that on a daily basis, I think of how tedious it is to drive into work and how this is not necessary and how they don't have good reasons for forcing me to come into the office. I guess I'll just end it here because we're now up to date in a sense. I'd say for most of my current job though, I've been relatively happy, so that's always really good. And I guess it does tend to help that I have that one coworker of mine that I get along with really well. And I don't think I've really had that much before. Maybe at my first job I had some friends at work, but this one sometimes feels a little different because I actually find myself feeling super goofy when I'm with him. And I say a lot of really weird stuff. <laughs> Sometimes the stuff that I say to him, I always wonder what people around us think because we're just having a conversation in our cubicle. And even at a regular talking voice, uh, a lot of neighbors can hear what you're saying. So I don't filter myself. I talk about a lot of weird stuff. Of course, if it tends to border too weird, I try to lower my voice or I try to uh, say it in a different way, but I guess it does make work a little bit more fun when I get to say these <laughs> random things to him and I do end up laughing a lot, so that helps tremendously. That just probably makes work feel uh, much different than it has ever been in the past for me. Maybe I felt like this was a relevant topic to talk about because as an adult, it's something I think about constantly. And since we dedicate so much of our time to work, it's just really important that you're happy there. So I am very glad that I've always been someone that didn't follow that standard rule of people wanting to stick to one company the entire time. I don't know why people tend to do something like that, but I'm very glad that I've always made the decision to make a change for myself because I know plenty of people or have heard of plenty of people that are just unhappy at their company, but they don't want to leave because of silly things like they like their manager, which I can understand that, but just liking someone doesn't mean you should allow yourself to continue being unhappy or they feel like they like their company, even though their company doesn't actually reciprocate in meaningful ways like a raise or a job that you want or that you like or they're just keeping you at a lowly position for a reason. These are all things to think about. I know at least for me, all I have on my mind is really just remote work. There are definitely some days where I can be overly frustrated that something like remote is complicated to obtain because a lot of people that maybe tend to think old school, they think that remote just means they're slacking off even a few days a week. I feel like I would possibly enjoy a balanced lifestyle half and half, but definitely long term, it would have to be 100% remote.